So you're getting into the world of Nix OS, Linux per se, and you're getting into tinkering your computer, but you feel like this is what your computer should be, but this is more like how it feels. I'm gonna show you some quick Nix OS tips. This could apply to any Linux distribution using systemd as its boot, but I'm gonna show some declarative options in your Nix OS configuration to speed up the boot process of your PC. Um, this became something I cared about when I got my laptop. My laptop uh, is a ThinkPad X220, X, yeah, X220 tablet, and it's not the fastest because of the BIOS, which I wanna core boot that thing, but I wanted to get as fast as I could. And so I also decided to see what my desktop uh, I can improve on the uh, booting process. So, of course, we're going to be using NixOS. And here's my NixOS system right here. And I'm using full system D boots. I'm not using Grub. Um, for the most part, I think some of this stuff can still apply. But if you're using Grub, check the Arch, Arch Wiki. Uh, what I usually do is I look at the Arch Wiki for what the uh what is to be changed and then i look in nix os options for declarative ways of changing that so the first thing you want to do is actually analyze what is the problem with your booting what is taking the most time and i didn't know you could do this but you got to do is type systemd dash analyze and we can see we have a full startup of 15 seconds but we have nine seconds in the firmware which is from the hardware one and a half seconds from the loader, one and a half about for the kernel, and then three for the user space. And so the firmware is not much you could do because that's pre-operating system. Uh, core booting or getting a different BIOS image would be the option here. Um, editing any BIOS options such as fast boot, no logo. That's what I have enabled, just the fastest boot process through the BIOS. But what we are going to be able to do is check specifically using the same command but with the argument to blame we can see every process system d has to go through before it's done and so before my edits i had a process that was taking about six seconds and that was network manager if you don't know what network manager is well it manages your network it's an application for um, network connectivity and so i looked i did some research and i was like well it seems like network manager is redundant here because I'm using a desktop that has ethernet and I don't need it. And so I disabled network manager and what I was greeted with instead was DHCP CD, which is a more bare bones DHCP connectivity tool, which was taking 13 seconds on startup. So it actually got worse. And so, I decided that the easiest way to cut down the boot up time was to actually give myself a static IP and completely remove network manager and the ACP CD. However, if you didn't want to do that, we'll give you an option uh, to make it faster with network manager if you're using a laptop or you are a wireless user. So we're gonna go inside of my configuration folder. So um, so for network manager, I made a separate um, Nix file for my network and I put a network two for the screen because I have my statically IP assigned. I don't wanna share that. So I have some blanked out examples here. Uh, this doesn't have to be in its own folder. You can put this in your configuration.nix. I just have it separated for cleanliness and for not showing my actual IP. So what I did was, as we can see here, I'm gonna zoom in even more for you guys. So I have my host name, which I had before. Network manager.enable equals false. You can either just completely get rid of this line or have it as a false so that if you ever did need to re-enable it, you could. I recommend that since it could be useful in the future. Um, and then dhcpcd.enable equals false is to completely disable any DHCP. So what is DHCP? It's a networking protocol that is used by your router at home or routers around the world that automatically assigns IP addresses to devices as they connect to the network. And so because I'm not disconnecting my device ever and it's been it's always connected to the same spot on the router, 
I decided to give it a static IP, meaning manually assigning it, which would basically remove DHCP from my computer. So in order to do this, you need to access your router settings. This could be a little sketchy, so back up your router settings and just don't be in the house with a bunch of people because you may fuck up. Uh, the way you could easily do this is we uh, quit out of here. You're going to want to do IP root pipe, which is the this slash next to the uh, these buttons right here, the semicolons, no, the brackets and then grep default and as we see this is your gateway you're going to want to type this into your browser uh, in the search bar and this will lead you to your router's settings page which will be a password uh, using a password you could usually find that uh, online through a manual or through your internet service provider and in there really all you want to do is disable dhcp uh, for your device your desktop and if we go back into our network, um, basically what you're gonna wanna do in your router is basically there's a range for DCH, uh, DHCP that goes from a certain IP to another certain IP range. You wanna make sure that whatever you assign your static IP here in the question marks, for instance, we'll say 23, that you want it to be outside of the, the DHCP range. So you want your range to start from 24 to 200. Uh, depends on whatever you want to assign it. Depends on how many devices you expect to be on your network. I'm not expecting anywhere more than five devices, let alone 300 or 200. So I made mine a few digits past um, 0.1 so that I could make my own IP address outside of that range. And then uh, down here is a default gateway. Uh, I don't know why I cover this one. This one's pretty much the same for everyone. It's Mine was 0.1, whatever it is for yours when you typed IP root grep default. And so these are now assigned in my NixOS configuration. Uh, the interface here is how your computer is connected. And if you're Ethernet, it's probably gonna be something similar to this, but it's purely based on your motherboard. And the command you're gonna want to do to check is if config. I'm not gonna press enter here because it has my sensitive IP data, but it's gonna be in if config to see all your um, IP address, your subnet mask, everything except the default gateway. And so doing this basically allowed me to uh, skip having to need network manager or DHCP CD at all, making my boot time much faster. Uh, either, you know, six to seven, you know, if I wasn't even using network manager, it'd be 13 seconds faster. Um, so it's a very overly complicated way, but it is the most optimal way, at least in my eyes at the moment. Very important though, it took me a lot of time to figure this out. When you remove yourself from the DHCP, uh, DHCP um, routing list, uh, you're probably going to be outside of the DNS configuration that is automatically signed by your router. So you're going to want to make sure to put your DNS in here to match your router. And if your router was like mine, who had an automatic uh, DNS configuration, I made it, made it manual. So that I made it this inside the router and I made it this inside my configuration. This is what uh, helped me out and this is what I was stuck on. So the overview here, my host name, I have both of these programs enabled as false because if you don't have DHCP CD explicitly set false in here, it's just going to be enabled without even being in the configuration because that's NixOS's default. Name servers is a DNS server config. You have your primary and your backup. For instance, this is a Google's. Do whatever is fastest in your area. You could check online using a DNS tester. This is the interface using that I found using IF config. IPv4 is all I configured. I don't think you need to do IPv6, but if you do, there's also an equivalent on the NixOS documentation. And just give yourself a static IP, whatever is outside of your DHCP lease uh, range. Prefix should be 24. If it's not, it, it, it should, if you have, uh, if you decide to give yourself three numbers, uh, it's probably gonna be 25, uh, as I believe. Then your default gateway. And so this can be inside your configuration.nix. Doesn't need to be separated. However, if you do have it separated like I do, in your configuration.nix, you're gonna make sure that you have it imported in the modules, like right here. As you see, modules network.nix, okay? 
And so that's just going to basically allow you to separate your files around. Um, I have that for a virtual machine and also my hardware configuration.nix, which is how yours should be automatically. So that's going to be the best way um, for those who are okay with static IP and don't need a network manager or a DHCP CD. However, if you're using a laptop or you're on a Wi-Fi card, that's not going to be possible for you. So how can we avoid all that? Now, this configuration right here is what you're going to want. So if you use a network manager, you're going to want to use this configuration. What this does is this is basically the main culprit of boot time. Now, there are other network manager services that are going to have to run at boot time that are going to slow down uh, your boot, but not by a lot. The one that's really the culprit here is the network manager wait online service. What this system systemd service does is wait till your computer connects to the internet before it's done booting. Personally, I see no reason for this to be the case. And in fact, doing this, uh, basically what this uh, declaration entails is that this lib make force blank basically disables this at boot time. However, it actually still connects to the internet at runtime, meaning you skip the boot process, but when you actually log into your computer, you'll still be able to connect to the internet. And so, this is only good for specific circumstances where you need the PC to be connected to the internet before you get to the user space, which is your login menu. Uh, for me, I didn't need it. I would do research if you feel skeptical about this, but I don't need it for this PC, but I use this on my laptop uh, because I do use wireless connection on there. So this will still cut down the time by a lot. And so it's systemd.services.networkmanager.waitonline. And you can do this with any systemd service, by the way. It doesn't have to be network manager. Just the name of the service is this line right here. In fact, let me uh, highlight it. This right here is just the name of the service. Everything else would be the same. And then the wanted by equals lib make force, the uh, empty brackets is going to disable it at, at a boot time, but not completely disable the service. That's the beauty of this is you still have network manager as a service, it's just not booting right away. And so this should save you, at, you know, five to 10 seconds depending on your computer. And it's a lot simpler than what I showed you before. And so that's a great thing if you're still, still gonna use network manager, um, but, I personally am not, so I'm gonna keep that commented out. So that is for the network. That's probably gonna be a main culprit. However, what are some other things we can do? Well, if you know NixOS, you know that when you boot your computer, you're given a generations prompt, meaning it gives you a list of all the generations possible to pick from, from all your different NixOS rebuilds. And it usually gives you a timeout and then it just defaults to the first generation or the newest one. What you can do is you can give it a loader timeout of one. What this allows you to do is, is as I know, uh, I might be able to get fee faster, but I just put one second to, it gives one second to show all the prompts before immediately going to the first generation. And what I do is if I do need to switch to a different generation, which is rare, I'll just mash my arrow keys, uh, the up arrow key like this until uh, it basically uh, negates the timeout and then lets me pick. Similar to opening your BIOS when you're booting by smashing the delete key. And so by doing this, you you know make computer boot up five seconds faster basically just in that. And so that's one easy change you could do to system D loader. So I do loader.timeout equals one. And um, and this is inside boot. So if you're not inside the brackets, you're going to do boot.loader.timeout equals one. Next, right here, if we check uh, if we check system D blame, we can see that the journal.d service is the biggest here. Um, this is not that long right now, but as time has gone on, the journal gets bigger and bigger and makes it longer and longer for it to load. So what we can do is we can add this declarative option, services.journal.d.extraconfig system max use 50M. What this means is that at the max amount, your system journal is gonna only take up 50 megabytes. You can increase this to 100, whatever you desire. Uh, whereas default, it could be two gigabytes up to four gigabytes, depending on your partition size. So this will cap the chance of your journal.d exploding in size as time goes on and making your computer slower and slower. And this would be good on laptops. 
as that size of that journal is going to be more um, diminishing on your boot time because you're on a less powerful system. So I recommend that. Uh, do a little bit more research. You know, it's a it's an important service. Journaling helps you find logs and problems with your PC. So that's another thing you can do. And then up here is another great one. And so what we have is kernel params equals quiet. And as I put down in the comment here, disable system D load screen for a faster boot. A lot of times, if you have a fast SSD, the actual display of the service is starting slows down the service is starting. And so what this does is it um, basically hides the display of services as they boot up, making it faster. So boot.kernelparams equals quiet basically makes your screen just show black for the most part. Now, I still have some messages. And so what you could do is if we go to um, make this and do it faster, Arch Linux, it was in here, silent boot. There's a silent boot page on Arch Wiki, which is still very useful for Nix OS. We go down, here we go. This right here will be the most optimal for message hiding. Um, I haven't tried it out yet, but for me, quiet has been good enough. Uh, makes my boot times way faster. And this would be the ultimate. So I would only do this if you know that you have no messages to be needed to see, you know. You might boot up your computer and something's wrong and you won't be able to see it because these messages are hidden out. So um, take, do some time, take some research if you want to go to this level. But just doing quiet uh, seemed to do quite a bit of uh, speed enhancing for me. So those are just about it. So either do a static IP configuration to completely get rid of Network Manager and DHCPCD as application services because you're not even using that protocol anymore. If you are going to use Network Manager, make sure to implement this system D service um, where you take out the boot time process that usually takes six seconds. This will probably be the easiest thing you could do if you don't feel like putting all that time into your router. For me, it was fun to learn that stuff. If you just care about getting a quick little boost, I think this would be great. Uh, if this is a bad thing to do, let me know in the comments. I'm not super experienced. This is just my experience. Um, I'm fully um, willing to take some criticism as some things are better for people and some things are not. And then this right here will reduce the journal size. And then this will make the timeouts for your generation list even shorter. Um, that is my recommendation. And that's about it. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. And uh, have a good morning, have a good evening, have a good night. Later.